degree temperature or even colder, you know, in the 20s or even colder than that. Uh, they'll have a large machine that they call a chiller, uh, and that refrigeration machine uh, will remove heat from uh, a liquid, and then they'll pump that liquid throughout a series of coils. The liquid in the coil is colder than the air blowing across the coil, so you have a natural heat transfer that occurs. Uh, so that's, that's the process of refrigeration, removing heat from one place where it's not wanted, rejecting it into another place where it makes no difference. Uh, an ice machine, you got an ice machine, it's, uh, you know, you got different types of evaporator coils, uh, and typically the, uh, the evaporator may be a mold where the water uh, actually flows across a certain mold and uh, the temperature of the evaporator is well below freezing, the water freezes in the mold, when it gets ready to harvest, you know, you get a, you know, you get an ice cube, whatever shape the ice cube may be. So that's how the evaporator works. It, it rejects heat. I'm sorry, it, it absorbs heat from the medium of exchange. Uh, again, this is a typical uh, low medium temperature evaporator. Your air conditioning evaporator coils, the fins are closer together because it's you know, it doesn't have to be defrosted. Now, if uh, an air conditioner or evaporator coil freezes up, you got a problem. It's not supposed to freeze up. It's a high temperature coil. Your, your normal operating temperature is 40 to 45 degrees. Let's say you got an air conditioner uh, and the evaporator is freezing up. What, what does that tell you? It tells you the operating temperature is below freezing. And the condensation that naturally occurs is, is icing up. That should not happen. You know, a couple of things can cause that. Low airflow across the evaporator coil, low heat load, uh, low refrigerant charge, and uh, your, oper your evaporator temperature is dropped below freezing. But an air conditioner evaporator coil should not freeze up. That's a problem if it does. Now, uh, what occurs in the evaporator? Number one, it absorbs heat from the medium of exchange. Number two, that's where your superheat occurs uh, inside your evaporator. Um, now, you've got in the evaporator coil, you've typically got a mixture of partial liquid, partial vapor. All right, let's say here's your metering device here, uh, and and we're we're going to we're going to cover metering devices in another lecture. All right, then here's your evaporator coil here. And so we'll just kind of draw that out, and I'm not the best artist. All right, you've got liquid entering the metering device here, and it's 100% so cool liquid. All right, this is where your pressure change occurs. Uh, you got high pressure here, and you got low pressure here. That's where your pressure change occurs. As the refrigerant enters the, the evaporator, goes through the metering device, your pressure's lowered, and what happens is that refrigerant, that liquid, begins to expand rapidly. Uh, and this is where your flash gas occurs. If you remember the pressure enthalpy diagram, this is where your uh, your chains of uh, this is where the uh, refrigerant begins to boil off because you had a pressure change, a sudden pressure change, and you had a sudden temperature change. Uh, let's say you went from you remember the example we did earlier. You had a 105 degree liquid. Okay, that 105 degree liquid at 260 psig, when it goes through the metering device, um, it goes from 260 PSIG down to about 70 PSIG. And the temperature goes from 105 to about 40 degrees. That's a drastic change. All right, as that change, as that change occurs, um, you've got a partial liquid, partial vapor going on here. Uh, and that flash gas is the phenomenon of the refrigerant absorbing heat from itself as it went from 105 degrees to 40 degrees. Uh, you know, what, what, where did the energy go or, you know, how did that occur? You know, a price had to be paid for that, <laughs> and in a matter of speaking. All right, and that price is about 25% of, of your liquid. So typically, you're going to have about 75% liquid entering the evaporator in most applications, and about 25% vapor. 
that 75% liquid is what's going to do the remainder of the work. That 25% vapor is called adiabatic expansion. That's the phenomenon of the refrigerant removing heat from its own cell. Um, you know, no real net refrigeration effect is gained or lost in that process. So that 25% vapor is, uh, is the efficiency cost. That's what it costs for that liquid to go from 105 degrees down to 40 degrees as it passes through the metering device. So that 75% liquid is what's remaining in the evaporator and it's boiling off as it travels through the coils. What's happening as it boils? It's absorbing heat. All right. The, uh, the molecules in the liquid refrigerant expand rapidly. Uh, you know, evaporization is a process of uh, a rapid expansion. The molecules expand rapidly as they do. They absorb massive amounts of latent heat from the air blowing across the coil or the water passing through the water tubes if it's a water-cooled, uh, or if it's a water evaporated. So, uh, this is refrigeration occurring. The uh, remaining 75% liquid boils off in the evaporator as it absorbs heat. All right, as it gets near the outlet of the evaporator or somewhere close to the outlet of the evaporator, something happens. There's no more liquid here. I'm going to have to get another marker. There's no more liquid to boil, and it's now 100% vapor. That's what we call saturated vapor. My writing is kind of sloppy. But that's what you call saturated vapor. Um, it's no more liquid to boil off. It's 100% vapor, and it corresponds to your evaporator pressure. Uh, you put your gauge on, measure your, your low pressure in your evaporator, uh, measure your, your suction pressure, which is the most common term. You convert that to temperature. Let's say in our example, uh, we had uh, roughly 70 PSIG, that corresponds to around 41 degrees or so. Um, and that's a typical operating temperature for a high temperature air conditioning evaporator coil. Alright, let's say we've got, what's 70 PSIG for R22? 41 degrees, we've got a PT chart. Okay, 70, um, is, I was right, 41 degrees. So, um, that refrigerant in the evaporator is becoming 100% vapor at a, um, a pressure of 70 PSIG and a temperature of 41 degrees. 41 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now let's come over here. Or right, remember, you got 100% vapor here is 41 degrees. Uh, typically, the air blowing across that coil is going to be warmer than 41 degrees. So what's what's going to happen? That 41 degree vapor is going to continue to absorb heat in the form of sensible heat. You know, the latent heat occurs as it was boiling off. What's the definition of latent heat? Heat that causes a change of state without causing a change in temperature. So at 41 degrees, uh, 70 PSIG, that refrigerant was absorbing massive amounts of heat from the air blowing across the coil. All right, now uh, all the liquid is boiled off. It did its thing. So we got 100% vapor at 41 degrees. As it travels through the last few turns of the evaporator, it's going to absorb additional heat. All right, let's say we measure the temperature of the suction line coming out of the evaporator. And let's say that it's um, 51 degrees Fahrenheit. So how much superheat do we have in this example? 10 degrees. 10 degrees. <clears throat> and that is a common, you know, that's in the ballpark. you got 10 degrees of superheat. All right, now what is the importance of superheat in the evaporator? Number one, it ensures there's no risk of uh, getting liquid back to you compressor. It, you know you got 100% vapor leaving your evaporator, traveling through your suction line, going back into your compressor. So that's the value of, of superheat. It ensures that you've got 100% vapor entering your compressor, no risk of liquid flood back. It also is an indication 
of how active your evaporator is, you know, how good a job your evaporator is doing. Now, let's say that we had a real high superheat here. That would indicate that you had 100% vapor early on in the, in the condensed, I'm sorry, in the evaporator. And you had a lot of time to absorb a lot of sensible heat. That would indicate a starving evaporator or a low charge or an excessively high heat load. Um, any questions on you know, what we went over? Okay, remember the condenser rejects heat out of the refrigerant, changes the refrigerant from a vapor to a liquid. The uh, evaporator absorbs heat from the medium of exchange, uh, and the, the refrigerant changes from a liquid to a vapor. So we've got rejecting, absorbing, and it's a continuous process.